and my name is Bob. 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 During the Raj in the Punjab city of Amritsar, Britain's local Panjandra, a Brigadier General Reginald Dyer, issued two orders. One ordered all the Indians using the main street to crawl its entire length on their hands and knees, and the other authorized a public whipping for citizens of Amritsar who should find themselves within a lathi length of a British policeman. A protesting crowd gathered in Jallianwalabagh, Amritsar's park, on April 13, 1919, where they listened to the testimony of victims, all of them unarmed and peaceable. You take their anger. Travel the major. They've had their warning. No meetings. Dyer appeared at the head of a large contingent of British troops. Then, without warning, he ordered his machine gunners to open fire. They pierced two and three bodies at a time. The shooting continued for a quarter of an hour until the ammunition ran out. It killed 379 people, all of them huddling together in fear. General Dyer, is it correct that you ordered your troops to fire at the thickest part of the crowd? That is so. 1,516 casualties with 1,650 bullets. My intention was to inflict a lesson that would have an impact throughout all India. General, did you realize there were children and women in the crowd? I did. But that was irrelevant to the point you were making. That is correct. Could I ask you what provision you made for the wounded? I was ready to help any who applied. General, how does a child shot the 303 Lee Enfield apply for help? During Indian royal tours, monarchs have been invited by relatives of Amritsar's victims to say sorry. But each time the sovereign's advisers have huffily told them that apologies aren't what monarchy does best. Though eventually, in 1997, by arrangement with the Foreign Office, in an attempt to rebrand the empire as benign, both Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh were persuaded to visit Amritsar's monument. There they would read on its commemorative plaque, this place is saturated with the blood of about 2,000 Hindus, Sikhs and Muslims who were martyred in a non-violent struggle. The Duke, however, harumphed with indignation and turned on his heel as he said, that's a bit exaggerated. It must include the wounded. And implied it was all beneath his notice. Royalty is now a dusty cherry on an imperial cake, left stranded as the empires receded, superfluous to requirements, and so stale and tasteless, yet it persists like an unlanced boil in the body politic, a musky legacy of accumulated atrocities, persistently cognizant of the sinister advice of James I's Chancellor. Democracy is the deadliest enemy to a monarchy. <laughs>